what it is what's up my name is Kamaya if you are new here to the channel welcome to the family uh, if you already been a part of the family I'm so thankful for you I love you and I'm thankful for you today I wanted to answer a question where is fear coming from where is this fear coming from if you're someone who's struggling with fear dealing with fear where could this be coming from One John four verse 18 says there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. Um, another translation says torment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Why did I want to share that scripture? I want to share that scripture because I also want to break it down. When we break down that scripture, it says there is no fear in love in other words where there is no love fear is present but where there is love fear is not present because if fear is present then that means that love has not been perfected now we know according to scripture if you are familiar with your word if you've been reading the Bible and studying it, the Bible refers to God as love. The Bible also uh, refers to love as being a fruit of the spirit. Paul encouraged us that out of everything, seek love, hope, faith, uh, love, seek love. And then we know that Corinthians talks about what love is. Jesus emphasizes that we should, you know, love each other. That's the second greatest commandment. We should love God. And so love is talked about often throughout the Bible. Now, over 365 times, fear is mentioned. And God emphasizes and says, do not be afraid. Do not fear for I'm with you. I'm going with you. I'm seeing the angels before you. And so he constantly tells us, do not be afraid. Jesus spoke to the disciples and says, fear not for it is I. And so fear is also talked about just like love is also talked about. But wherever God is, since the word of God refers to God as love, this means that wherever God is, there can't be fear. Now, we know that God is omnipresent, but we also know that everyone don't come to the full understanding of God's presence. So that means that everybody don't have access to his presence, not because he is not all around, but because we're not in him. And so with that being said, if we're not in God's presence, we can expect fear. If you haven't come to the full understanding and the full knowledge of who God is, you can expect fear. Let's get into what is fear. Now, I did research and I'm all about science. I, I love science. I love social studies, especially with science. Science in the Bible, I'm telling you, lay it out side by side and what scientists has have discovered over the years. And then you read the word of God. It only confirms what the Bible is telling us. And scientists says that it is a small organ in the middle of the brain that when this small organ recognizes fear, it triggers the body, it triggers the body, and then the body goes into fear. But when it recognizes fear, when it can sense that fear is around, what happens? The entire body shuts down. And so I wonder what would happen if this small organ that's in the middle of our brain was to recognize God and his love and his presence. Well, we know what would happen because, because 1 John 4, 18 says that there is no fear in love. So that means that if this small organ come to know the love of God, come to the understanding of the presence of God, come to know that God is love, there won't be fear. What we recognize as fear and being afraid, there won't be any fear presence because of who we are in because of who presence we are standing in fear has a lot to do with torment fear has to do with punishment we even know this and what's crazy is fear can even be a part of the physical and the spiritual because when we talk about our past our past is spiritual because even though we've encountered it we no longer in it and so to, to go back in our mind and to have memories of our past and things that cause us to be afraid, what happens, it causes the entire body to go into this nervous system and overload. So even fear can be present in the spirit. 
Fear can also be present in the physical. I had an issue with public speaking. Like I had a fear of public speaking. I did not like the way my voice, how deep my voice is. I, I didn't like the way how country I was, none of that. And when I became old and I'm, I'm like, I have this bad anxiety. I have this bad fear of having to speak in front of people. Okay, where is this coming from? I asked God, where is this coming from? And God made me realize this is spiritual because I am being reminded something that happened in my past, which I'm no longer standing in right now in the present. Something that happened in my past is triggering that organ, that small organ that's in the middle of my brain to cause my nervous system and my body to go into fear. Why? Because I can remember being a little girl and I was always picked on by the way that I talk, how fast I talk, how deep my voice was. And so that caused me to have a sense of fear and be uh, very self-conscious of my voice. I didn't like the way I sounded. And so as an adult, I'm living from fear. Fear can very well be spiritual. And that's why the Lord says that in his presence, there is no fear. But what is it? Freedom. Fear causes your body to lock down and shut down. That you can be in chains and you can be shackled and bound in your mind due to fear. You look up the definition of fear. Fear is the awareness and the emotion of danger. You can sense danger and so your body and your mind triggers fear. So the emotion of fear begins to overwhelm you. And God knew that we would suffer with fear because it is mentioned again over 365 times throughout the Bible. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Fear is one of those strong emotions that will cripple you, that will cripple you and I to cause us to not live and to not move and have our being. Because the Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And so when you have knowledge of his spirit, when you have knowledge of his presence, you are invited into his love, which is also an invitation to be free because there is no fear in love for perfect love. It diminishes fear. Where is this fear coming from? Let's talk about where, if you are living in fear, fear of the unknown, fear, it doesn't matter. Any type of fear is not from God. And so we're going to talk about it. Before I even start sharing these four things, the reason why I'm able to share these four things is because these are things that I was personally struggling with. And it was causing me to live in a place of fear instead of freedom. And so I'm sharing these four things with you so that you can go from seeing the fear, addressing it, where is this coming from, to moving into freedom because you know these four things. And again, these are four things that the Lord had dealt with me personally about. And I had to realize, okay, this is where the fear is growing from. And the more I was able to recognize these things, the more in his love I became. And because I was in his love, it drove out that fear. Fear doesn't live here. It don't. I live in a sense of freedom because I know what I know. And so where is fear coming from? Where is this fear coming from? If you're someone who's struggling with fear, dealing with fear, where could this be coming from? The first point I want to give you is this fear may be coming from feeding off of your unbelief. You don't believe God's love that he has for you. You haven't accepted it. You are living in unbelief. And so with your unbelief, fear tends to feed off of that because now you're not living in God's love. You're not living in his presence because you're kind of, I don't know. You like, I'm not sure. Maybe it's true or maybe it's not. And so you find yourself having anxiety and having fear because of your unbelief. And so when you haven't fully believed God's love for you, when you haven't fully accepted God's love for you by accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior, by receiving the, the grace and the mercy that he pours upon those who he loves, receiving his correction, because we know that a father who corrects his children indeed loves his children. And so when you don't fully believe and you don't fully accept God's love for you, you will find fear feeding off of that. And it will become bigger and larger, not only in your mind, but in your life. And that is torment. That is torment and punishment. And that is not your portion. That is not my portion. That is not our portion. That is not what God desires for us. He does not desire for us to live from that place of unknowing. He doesn't desire for us to live from that place of unbelief, but God has sent witnesses in the earth. God has sent his son for the witnesses to to bear witness to his son. So that through the witnesses that the Lord has sent, you would come to believe, not only believe, but know and so if you find finding yourself in fear this season, if, if, if fear is just overwhelming and it is taking the best of you, I can guarantee you 
It is because fear is feeding off of your unbelief and your unwillingness to accept God's love for you. This is the second thing. Fear can be present in your life. Fear can be and will be present in your life if you find yourself being double-minded. You, you, you're easily persuaded. You're finding yourself being unstable with all your thoughts. You hear you there. You, you lukewarm. You know, you neither hot nor cold. You just all over the place. I'm telling you, fear will feed off of that. Fear will feed off of your unstableness. Fear will feed off of knowing that you're going to be persuaded by everything because you're double-minded. And we only have one mind. God gives us one mind. And when you find yourself double-minded, this fear, this torment, because that's not our makeup. We're never intended to be double-minded. You either this way or you that way. Ain't no gray. It ain't no in-between when it comes to God. You either one or you the other. With that being said, when fear is present, it can very well be because of your you being unstable in your mind. You're double minded. That's why the word of God encourages us to take captive our thoughts. Anything that that exalt itself above the knowledge of God, take it down, take down every thought and make it obedient to what Christ, the spirit of the Lord. Because when we make our thoughts obedient to the spirit of the Lord, we're making our thoughts obedient to his love, obedient to his presence. There is no fear in his love. There is no fear in his presence. So that means I am living from a place of freedom, even in my mind. Fear is not present. He give us a sound mind for the spirit of fear. But fear will not live where his spirit lives. When you're making your thoughts captive, when you bring your thoughts captive and you're making your thoughts obedient, you're not unstable. You're not being persuaded by everything because, again, you know what you know. Unbelief can cause us to be double minded. Double mindedness can cause us to be unstable mentally, spiritually and emotionally unstable. We can be persuaded by anything. And really, the only thing that's birthed out of it is fear. It causes you to be afraid. The third point that I want to share with you is uh, fear can be present when you are more confident in yourself than you are God. It's not confidence at all. It's really fear. You're afraid. And fear will feed off of that. When you find yourself, you thinking that you can do everything by yourself because of yourself. You got what you got because of you. That is fear. That's not freedom. And so when you find yourself putting your confidence in yourself over your comfort, instead of instead of putting your confidence in God, fear will feed off of that. Because we know that with ourselves, everything is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. And when we know that we can have confidence in him, we can have confidence in him when we know what we know. But when we don't know this, when we think we can have confidence in ourselves, we can find ourselves being afraid, living in fear because I'm living from my place of understanding about myself. I only have confidence in myself. I don't have confidence in God. And so I wonder why we wonder why we're so afraid and we're living in fear and we're paranoid because we have confidence and faith in ourselves, which is not confidence and which is not faith at all. And so what happens? Fear. Fear begins to manifest and fear begins to take over our life. Fear begins to take over our bodies because we will always fail, even ourselves. But God will never fail. And so we can be confident in knowing that. And when you know that God will never leave you nor forsake you, it's freedom attached to that, baby. It ain't no fear attached to that. It's freedom attached to that. The last thing I want to share with you, if you are number four, if you if you find yourself living from a place of this this realm, The word of God says we live according to the spirit. We focus on what we can't see. And that's in in looking forward, not looking behind. Because even looking at your past, it's torment. God wants us to remember, but he don't want us to live from that place. So if you find yourself living in torment, you're living in fear because you, you have found your focus to be fixated on something other than his presence. When you focus and and when your focus is your past mistakes, when your focus is uh, who could be coming after you or who who you're trying to come after, even with yourself, who are you trying to come after? If your focus isn't chasing him, focusing on him, you are living in torment. 
And these are the places where fear will begin to feed off of. And this, these are the four places, especially in my own personal walk, in my own personal life, fear began to grow from. I was so afraid. I was living in torment. And that's because of these four things that I shared with you. And so my prayer is you receive God's love. That If you are watching this, I pray that you receive God's love. That you come to the full knowledge and understanding of how wide, how deep, how long is his love for you. And when you come to know this, you will you will activate something not only in your mind, but in your heart. And you will be filled with his love and his presence. He is all around you. The word of God says he is right near you. The word of God says he is close and he is near to you. Especially those with broken hearts, especially those with cursed spirits. He is near. He is closer than your skin. Is you hearing me? He is the very breath that you breathe. But when you don't know these things and you don't believe these things, you will find yourself living in fear. And so my prayer is that your eyes and your heart and your ears be open and sensitive to his presence, to his love lives in you or around you. May God bless you. May God keep you. If you are new here to the channel, subscribe, share this with somebody. Listen to the Being of Her podcast where, where I'm kind of switching it up a little bit. But definitely listen to the Being of Her podcast. We have Bible studies there uh, helping women discover their hurt in Jesus Christ. So may God bless you. May God keep you. And I will talk to you on the next episode. Mm -hmm.